Welcome back to Dr. Sellers Educate. We're happy to support you as you continue on your journey. If this is the first time you've tuned into our channel, go ahead and make sure you subscribe so that you will be notified every single time there's a new episode, which usually happens every week. If you are returning to this channel, we're excited to welcome you back as we continue on our journey focusing on Boyer Scholarship Model. We have covered discovery, we have covered uh, application, and today we will cover integration. And we will wrap up next week focusing on teaching. If you are not familiar with the resources that you need to focus on and to purchase, if you haven't already, uh, as it relates to Boyer Scholarship Model and all of the content that we'll cover, it's very simple. We're also going to put this in the description so you'll have that information available to you right away. You are going to be using Billings and Halstead Teaching and Nursing, the sixth edition, and Dr. Caputi's CNE Review Book, Second edition, if you're on the journey to CNE or CNE novice. Now, if you're on the journey to CNE CL, we highly recommend one of two resources by Teresa Schellenbarger. You can either purchase her CNE CL competencies book that is also located in the description, okay, if you're not familiar with that resource, or the CNE CL review book that she publishes. Here at Dr. Sellers Educate, our focus is to make sure that you have the tools and resources you need to be successful, okay? These are the core essential resources that you need. There are no other resources that we recommend here other than our study workbook, simply because that keeps you focused so you can maximize the time that you have to focus on the important content you need to be successful on the C&E exams. We are excited to share, if you haven't heard already, um, a testimonial from another nurse educator colleague who was successful on the C&E in 60 days on her first attempt. We have talked to many nurse educators across the country that we work with, and we value the input that we receive from you all. So as you're on your journey, we want to hear from you. Let us know how you're doing on the C&E prep time, right? You should have a seven-week study plan. That information is also listed here in the description in case you're not sure exactly what that is, all right, you'll be able to print that out so that you can be guided on your next steps. We often get the question as to whether or not the content here is enough for you to be successful on the exam. The simple answer is no. This is simply intended to be a snapshot, right? Five to 10 minutes focusing on a specific content area to help you close your gap. So it's a great start, but this is unfortunately not the only step you will need to take to make sure you are successful on the exam. We want you to spend the number of hours that you need to to make sure you close your knowledge gaps so that you will be successful on your first attempt. This is a no judgment zone though. So if you're not successful the first time, we are here to support you until you are successful. I also wanna share that our next CNE and in 60 Days cohort starts in January. As of today, which is December 11th, we have three spots left, okay? We periodically open up our c and &E in 60 days based on requests from you all, okay? So that is our trigger to determine that we need to work on designing a curriculum for a new cohort is based on feedback from you all. So for today's session, we are going to be starting on page eight um, in Billings and Halstead, and then you're going to also pull out Dr. Caputi's review book. Um, now, if you're on the journey to CNECL, the good news is, as you are reviewing all of the competencies in Dr. Schellenberger's um, resources, you are going to cover all of the scholarship model dimensions as part of your progression through that specific resource, okay? So um, the actual scholarship model components and dimensions are intertwined throughout many of the CNECL competencies. So it's there isn't a dedicated chapter in the same way there is for CNE. And that's why we want you to make sure you use in Billings and Halstead as your Bible, we like to call it, to help you close those knowledge gaps. Integration, it is defined as the interpretation and synthesis of knowledge within and across disciplines. We think about Boyer scholarship model and it has been a challenge for some nurse educator colleagues to be successful on the exam questions. All right, so we have simplified it. We have modified the content that we use for our exam review just to make it more clear. Um, and I would say it's been very effective. We have met our objectives because during our live review, we um, see far more correct answers 
than we used to see. It used to just be a lot of confusion. So we have done a, quite a bit of work of making sure that there's clarity around each dimension of scholarship. That is what has led us to breaking down each of the dimensions um, every single week right here on Dr. Sellers Educate because we wanna make sure that we give you a great foundation to start with as you scaffold and build on your knowledge related to Boyer Scholarship Model. All right, so that is one of the definitions if you look on page eight that Billings and Halstead talk about as it relates to um, the scholarship of integration. It involves synthesis and interpretation using an interdisciplinary approach. So this specific scholarship dimension, we are working together collaboratively with our clinicians to develop insights with a more holistic view. We want to think about what the concern or the issue is related to the patient's care um, or the situation that we're being faced with. And then we want to come together and talk about what the research says. Remember, we started with that scholarship of discovery, and that is defined as new research. We want to do our work independently, right? And, and be able to contribute to a conversation around recommendations for possible solutions. Integration also involves designing learning models used to guide our students. And there are many different strategies and teaching tools that we use to help our learners close those knowledge gaps, right? So that is an example of integration, being able to look at the literature and design those tools that are gonna best serve our students. We seek to engage in the development of team building where we are collaborative across disciplines, sharing our knowledge, even sharing our expertise, knowing that our nursing students really start with the fundamentals associated with nursing content and nursing care practices, and they integrate the different disciplines, responsibilities into their daily work. For example, when a nursing student is taking care of a a post-op patient that has had a hip replacement or knee replacement, they will work collaboratively with physical therapy, with occupational therapy, perhaps with the nutritionist um, and with the care manager to make sure we are providing the best holistic care for that patient. Um, and if there was a specific concern that surfaced or a major issue, there's gonna be a, that's gonna be a great opportunity for um, as to collaborate with other disciplines about what the best strategy should be for that specific patient. All right, so now we have a practice question and I will go ahead and put in a plug right now. If you feel like you need more content review, highly encourage you to head over to our membership site. So we do have a monthly boot camp where we meet as nurse educator colleagues every single month. And we talk about a variety of content areas related to the CNE and CNECL exams. Um, what is that? What that will provide for you is just a weekly connection with colleagues across the country that are on the journey with you, right? And it happens in 2023 every third Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern. And if that's not a good time for you, every session is recorded. Okay, so we spend about 45 minutes talking about content related to the competencies, and then we spend 15 minutes at the end for Q and A. It just so happens in December. Um, yesterday, actually, we focused on Boyer Scholarship Model. So we did an extensive review where our nurse educator colleagues were able to walk away with a solid understanding of Boyer Scholarship Model, all four dimensions with specific examples. There's a whole lot more content if you want to head over to our membership or our community site. Uh, the, also, the link is listed right here in the description. So we have an experienced faculty member who is struggling with describing examples of scholarship of integration in their portfolio. What types of activities would best fulfill this dimension of scholarship? So we have A, utilizing a variety of high impact teaching strategies to engage students in the classroom. B, collaborating with the physical therapy department to develop a training program. C, conducting a research study on nursing retention strategies, or D, present the outcomes of a service-based learning project to the curriculum committee. All right, so you can go ahead and pause and come back when you're ready to go over the correct answer. If you chose B, you are correct, right? Because clearly B option is allowing for us to collaborate with the PT department um, to make sure we have a solid training program in place. We're going to pull data from the um, literature and we are going to integrate different elements that we know are necessary as part of the training program 
for our audience. All right. So again, if you want to know the resources that we use for today's content, and as you close your knowledge gaps, you want to purchase Billings and Halstead if you haven't already, and Dr. Caputi's review book, if CNE is part of your journey, they are both available on Amazon. And remember that you may have teaching and nursing on your bookshelf already, all right? It is an Elsevier resource, so we highly encourage you to check there first. And if you don't have the sixth edition, we highly encourage you to use that one. And there's a good reason why. We know that the exam writers utilize the most current edition when they are writing test questions. That is why NLM recommends the most current editions of these resources. All right, so this has been another episode of Dr. Sellers Educate. We hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, reach out to us. We hope to see you at an upcoming event. And if not, we hope you have a wonderful holiday and we will see you next time. Have a great one, everybody. Bye-bye.